I don't even know what to call myself. Cause sometimes I think I'm an artist and sometimes I'm like, this shit's not art. I don't know if it's embarrassing to talk about, but I wasn't supposed to graduate. I had a really, really cool teacher and she like damn near did all my work for me so I could graduate. Shout out Miss Westmoreland. I was desperate to get out of my hometown, mm. desperate. I come from a really, really, really small kind of retirement town and uh, it's called Athens, Texas. There's nothing but racism and a Walmart. Feel like I am. I know I'm not worth it, but you made me feel like I am. Welcome back to the Creative Hills Podcast, everybody. Today, join with me here today. We got 18-year-old Say Less. Say Less. Say Less. I, honestly, that's a that's, that's a pretty fire name, bro. I, I think that just the name itself is pretty marketable. I think it'll do good. How, how'd you end up coming with that? Um, We'll see. I used to, I um, it's my second name, I guess. I used to be Supreme BG, which is a disgusting name that I came up with when I was 14. And when I moved out here, my, uh, at the time, manager, like, we would always say, oh, say less, say less, say less. Like, every time we would go somewhere to do something, we would be like, okay, say less, say less, say less. And we just kept saying it over and over. And we were like, wait, we need a new name. And we don't really know what else to say. So it's like, oh, say less. Say less. Yeah. There so. you go. It worked out. Um, so for everybody watching, who who is say less? Um, say less is... Whoever you interpret me to be, I don't know. I'm 18. I'm from Texas. I uh, I like to um, you know present myself as somebody that is more relatable than just you know a uh, artist, a rapper, a singer, or whatever. So I think you can make me whoever you want to be because I don't know. I a lot of people can be like followers of the music or just you know overall just see me on Instagram and they're like, oh, I fuck with him. So I don't know. Just whoever you see me as and you know, you want to interpret me as, because, you know, impressions. Yeah, I fuck with that, man. Uh, one of the things that stood out to me right off the bat of, like, just from our texting interactions is just how how open you are about just fucking texting the way you want to text and just, like, throwing the heart emojis and all this yeah. shit. And, and I think that's, like, a newer generation no thing. And I, I fucking love it of, like, not being afraid to say whatever the fuck you want to say and show love however the fuck you want to show it. Mm -hmm. Compared to, like, back in the day, you do that shit and everybody's just like, the fuck? You know what I mean? And so it's yeah, like, exactly. I think that's the new wave. And uh, I, I fucking love that, bro, honestly. um I mean, I think that just overall, people with personas or images take it way too seriously. And I think if I present myself as, like... I don't know, because I want to be, I want to market myself to people that are like me, you know, and I don't really, I mean, I do, but I don't really take myself that serious, you know, like I look at myself and like, I don't know, I'm not going to act a certain way in order to please somebody else. And I mean, that might be the way to do it. That might be the way to win. But I think um, if you actually want people to relate to you and attach to you and actually follow through with what you do, you have to relate to them. And, you know, people in high school, as like, I'm 18, people, other people that are 18, they're, they're, they're fun with their friends. They're going to joke about all this gay shit. They're going to, they're going to, you know, and I just, I don't know. I feel like personas are overrated and I feel like taking yourself seriously is overrated. Just have fun with the shit. If it works, it works. Yeah. Love that, man. Uh, are you still in school, by the way, or did you graduate? Yeah, I graduated, um, 2020 last year and, I could have gone to college, but I didn't. <laughs> I, I have more faith in this, and so that's what I'm doing. Hey, at the end of the day, do you have any regrets on that? Um, no, never, ever, because I was desperate to get out of my hometown. Mm. Desperate, because I come from a really, really, really small kind of retirement town, and uh, it's called Athens, Texas. There's um, there's nothing but you know racism, um, and a Walmart. So, yeah, so I was really, really, really desperate to just leave. And the college that I got offered to, which was only one, but it was in Athens. It was a community mm -hmm. college. And I was like, oh, fuck, no, I'm not staying here another two, four years. And I was literally talking about him to it. I, I'm talking to him about it. Was it yesterday about the football shit? Because I could have gone to college for football. And um, what, what position did you play? I was an outside linebacker. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten a little small since then, <laughs> but shit. Kind of used, used to be pretty way bigger. Or yeah, what? I mean, yeah. I used to be more um, full, I guess, and I just stopped caring because that's the only reason I was getting big, you know, for mm -hmm. football. But um, I was talking to him about it, and I really can't see myself doing that because I was like, I can do this and perhaps be in debt or all this different stuff that comes with college, and I just never really 
saw an interest in it. And he was like, well, what if you made it pro? And I'm like, bro, like, that's like one in two million. I'm not like, I mean, as much as you're supposed to have faith in yourself, you know, if you want to go to the NFL, strive to go to the NFL, but I'm, I didn't see myself doing that shit. At that point also, did you happen to just enjoy making music a lot more than football? Of course, yeah, because I was failing damn near every year of high school, and that's strictly because I would stay in my room 24 hours just mm-hmm. trying to figure out a new plug-in, trying to figure out how to do a certain thing on the FL Studio or all this different shit with the music, and I was just constantly finding myself putting school on, you know, second priority. Music was the first because I just wanted to – I knew I was going to make it out somehow, and I determined that when I do make it out, I'm going to be solid, like, at the music. So I don't want to be, like – finally coming to LA, finally coming to wherever and not know anything about what I'm doing. Mm. So I was just spending hours on hours on hours all alone, just in there with my laptop, which at the time was a like five-year-old Dell laptop that took like 30 minutes to like render a song. And so I just would work constantly, constantly, constantly. And I just didn't really care about music. I mean, school at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. You, you, you built the chops up before coming out here and you knew that you couldn't just show up and expect everything to fall in place like you wanted to make sure whenever there's an opportunity you you were ready for it exactly that's i think i'm ready for damn near any opportunity i don't know if we're facing problems as we see it and every single day just handling shit how's it supposed to be handled but hey there you go bro um for you that school uh or the end of school uh do you experience zoom school um no we um we went on spring break and that's when quarantine kind of got into effect back in Texas. So it was really spring break and just that's it. And I, it's a really, I don't know if it's embarrassing to talk about, but I wasn't supposed to graduate. Like I didn't do any work over the entire quarantine because I was like, oh shit, this is just extra time to like sit in front of the laptop. Yeah. And so I didn't do any work. And so I had a really, really cool teacher. Shout out Miss Westmoreland. <laughs> but I had a really, really cool teacher and she, um, did, like damn near did all my work for me so I could graduate just so I could like um because shit my family is very very conservative mm. and they're the opposite of do what you want to do gotcha and um I mean everybody but my mom I love my mama but everybody just you know it's either school work or nothing and so she knew the um the severity of it I just had to graduate or I'd be stuck in the house forever and so Miss Westmoreland did my shit and I graduated with like a 2.7, but I graduated. Hey, shout out to her. Yeah, shout out to Miss Westmoreland. Love you. I feel like there's always those uh teachers along the along the way that help out kids or help out people in need. Cause honestly, one whole grade could fuck up your whole yeah. change your life forever. It's like say in this case you didn't want to you want didn't want to go the college route, right? But for anybody that did want to fucking go to college, it's like, damn, you would have been fucked if mm-hmm. In any other scenario, but no, nah, bro, I'm, I'm glad that worked out. I think betting on yourself is the best thing you can do. And now you're out here. How has your life changed since you've been in LA? Um, shit. Um, it's definitely changed drastically. But um, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, flaunt and be like, oh, everything's so so good, everything's amazing. Like we're still, you know, we're we're, we're struggling. Like we're we're we're, <laughs> we're trying to get shit done. But um, yeah. But I think uh, I think. There's much more opportunities than there is, of, of course, in Texas. Uh, you know, everybody's here. Everybody's, I mean, people are starting to move out, but I don't know why, but shit. Um, there's much more opportunities. There's much more chances to take. There's much more people to meet, much more places to go. And it's just, you got to have the resources to get that shit done. And that's what we're working on right now. All right, so you pulled up today with, with your boys you want to introduce? Good night, Kiko. Yo, what's good? <laughs> this is my first podcast. I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> and we got CJ Nasty. He's out of frame, but CJ Nasty. <laughs> you, you can come in the, the frame real quick. Just come around. CJ Nasty. CJ Dickums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CJ Coochie. CJ Simmons. He's working his way here. CJ, take your best friend. Let me see. Where is that? Uh, that camera right there. This one right. cracking. Yeah. Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, was cracking at CJ Nasty, you feel me? Name is Pim, you feel me? I does my thing. <laughs> feel me? These my boys, right or die. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem, bro. Thank you for that. Special guest. Special CJ guest. Uh, cameo, special cameo. But yeah, these guys are, you know, all we have mm-hmm. in, in terms of, you know, as far as resources, because we don't really have a team or 
any other, I mean, it's speaking for myself, I don't have anyone here mm-hmm. as far as, you know, friends, family, anybody. I just have them wake up. How, how did house. you guys end up together here? Um, well, I've known him for almost two years. We just met on Instagram years ago. He had asked me for a feature and I was going to charge him. And I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I was going to charge him. And I was like, shit. Yeah, he was going to pay me, but uh, I was I was listening to him, and I actually got into it, and I was like, yo, like, I, I cannot. Like, I cannot charge this guy. Like, I'm, I'm, And I literally went to him, and I apologized. I was like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I'll, like, let's, yeah. Uh, our do- let's just, our dog um, team was over there. Let's just get what we get done and see how it goes. And so we just kept staying in contact, and so I finally came out here, and he had came over one day and had just started staying the night, and nights led to weeks, and, you know, here we are. <laughs> Gang. <laughs> Gang, yeah. Gang. And um, I had met him. CJ Dickham, CJ Nasty. I had met him. Uh, we had, well, he had came over one day because we had the same barber, I guess. We got the, we got a haircut the same day. And um, we had just went to a party that night and never left. Now we're, you know, <laughs> brothers. <laughs> never yeah. left. No, that, that, that's dope, honestly. And I'm guessing you guys all contribute in one way or another, help each other yeah, out with, with all, certain things, right? I mean, yeah, we all, um, I guess it's a, it's a healthy balance, mm-hmm. I guess, because, you know, there's always arguments every day. There's always these disagreements every single day, but, it's, you know, um, I hate to say it, but, you know, boys will be boys. You boys know? will be boys. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, I feel like those uh, disagreements come in handy because as long as you're speaking your mind and everybody allows themselves to speak up, it's like yeah. better than just being quiet about everything, you know? So yeah, I that, I mean, that goes a long way. Yeah, that's one thing that we don't have an issue with, honesty and speaking your mind. Everybody always got to disagree with something. Everybody got to, nah, this, nah, 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 nah. But, you know, we love each other. We we, we, we help out each other as much as we offend each other. But Do you guys play each other, you, you guys' own shit? And then you guys are like, oh, that shit was whack. Yeah. And then you're like, damn. Well, I mean, I don't think I would ever <laughs> tell him that it's not, that it's whack. But I'd be like, shit, this, you know. This ain't it, bro. Yeah, but I mean, because re- um, we live in a place like this. And uh, he records upstairs. I record downstairs. Mm. And so I always text him. I'm like, bro, come here. Like, come here real quick. Come come listen to this. And yeah. he does the same shit. As soon as I walk up there, he's like, yo, listen to this. And it's just, you know, all the time, every single day, new songs, new songs, new songs. Because we record damn near every day. Mm. And it's just, um, yeah, always got to show each other. Always got to get the critique. And as much as yeah. I would like to say I don't really care about his opinion, but I fucking do. Like, I live with him. <laughs> I have to, like, I've got to, you know, get some type of critique. But I don't think you would ever tell me he's bad. You'd just be like, ah, eh, it's not it. What you think? I have a couple of times. I ain't gonna lie. I told him I was like, ah. well, no, it's not like it's not like really. I've told him like this isn't it. I've just tried to like use like or say certain things like, oh, you know, maybe just turn the auto tune down a little bit, or maybe just, or if you put like this to build it up, then maybe mm-hmm. that'll be hard, like some drum build ups or something. Because if he does like some hyper pop stuff, or if he does like other things, I'll be like, oh yeah, this is hard, but maybe just tweak it just a little bit. So I don't try and like take over his thing. I just try and tell him like, oh yeah, this will sound hard type shit. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you guys want to see each other win. All you guys, yes, right? <laughs> yeah, we all we all gonna see each other win. We all are going to win, whether yeah. or not it's you know soon or later. You know, we're going to win. Of course, I got it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to force feed him. <laughs> so earlier today, I was listening to a few of your Spotify songs, and uh, I fuck with it, man. If you had, like, earlier today, you said that there's nothing you can compare it to, or not, you don't want to put yourself in a box. You want to let whoever listens interpret however they want to. Like, for you, what? how would you describe your own music? Um, we actually talk about this all the time because I'll do something in a certain style and he'll be like, oh, you should do this. Like, this should be your lane. And I think I don't want to have a lane because I would rather be, um, I'd rather be that guy like, okay, you get a complex article and I would rather them say he has everything that you want to listen to. Like if you're fans of, you know, rap music, if you're fans of sad music, if you're fans of hyper pop, if you're fans of some dubstep shit, he has it for you rather than he's in, he's a fucking he's a emo rapper as they like to call him <laughs> yeah I, w- I would rather have you know things from all, all sides of the spectrum rather than just one because i feel like that actually completes you as an artist mm-hmm. because you know the term yeah you gotta, you gotta <laughs> anyways uh i think the term artist is thrown around really 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 
oversaturated like because people think that you know you pick up audacity in a in a in a, in a mic from walmart you're you're an artist now mm. and i think um an artist should be distinguished from a rapper or a soundcloud rapper or whatever because i don't even know what to call myself because sometimes i think i'm an artist and sometimes i'm like this shit's not art i'm talking about <laughs> fucking like, i don't know how how close you paid attention but i have this song called big purr yeah. it's uh she called me big purr i made her a pussy purr i told her to speak up because i can't hear it. and it's like that's just not art like i don't i don't i don't think the term artist should be thrown around as loosely as it is what did you have to say um i just wanted to say like like I agree, like, I agree with what he's saying. Like, um, I feel like, I feel like when you put yourself in different aspects in music or whatever, you feel me? I feel like that's what separates you. That's what separates artists from just rappers or just singers or, you know, shit like that. And so in terms of how would I describe my own music, I think it's just a reflection of, you know, what's going on in my life, I guess, how I'm feeling, how... Because I don't really come into, because my recording process is so weird, because I don't really come into anything with, um, like, what I want to do. I just go and listen to beats and, you know, because mm. I don't really, we don't write music either, like any of us. Well, he does sometimes, but we don't really write music, so it's just, you know. Like everything is just freestyling? Mm, it's just exactly, you know, how we're feeling at the time. And so gotcha. it's just, you know, my. I feel like that's a lot better. Like, you guys do it, like, bar, bar, bar. Bar and then another bar and then another yeah, bar. Like and record then a line, bar. stop yeah. it. Record yeah, another line, stop it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess you could say my music is a reflection of my reality. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I love that, man. I think, yeah, like uh, one of my friends uh, early on, he 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 was one of the first examples I had of like doing that. Of literally just he would make a whole beat and then he would do one line and then the next line and then the next line. And I feel like that's a lot of times nowadays, that's the way to do it nowadays. Yeah. I mean, if you want to just pump shit out because, um, I, I mean, I don't spend longer on a song than, you know, a night. Mm -hmm. And I think you after know, that you let it go. Yeah. Because I mean, I don't know if I'll be exposing myself here, but I, I'm still on the FL studio demo. So mm -hmm. I can't reopen projects. I have to do the same thing all oh, like, in, in one night. And so, I think if I can, you know, make some dope shit off this the demo, I think, you know, I'd, I'd be set for an actual studio. That's crazy. Honestly, I uh, I admire that. And I think a lot of people listening right now, they'll be like, oh, shit. Like, if you could do that off of demo, it's like, imagine what you can do when you have everything, you know? And I, I think for everybody watching, that's another lesson of, like, you don't need everything. You don't need it all to fucking make music. Where, whatever you yeah. can get your hands on. I know that there's people that have made music off of their fucking iPhone type shit. So it's mm. like... And it's still hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's yeah. like, you don't, you don't need all the all the luxuries to do it and uh no but that's that's great man honestly thank you are you into are you fucking with tiktok um yeah i mean as much as you know you can without it being unhealthy because i mean i have tiktok but i delete it for like weeks at a time just because i find myself just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling so you and scrolling. really it got you yeah but i mean um i feel like i have the potential to like be like a tiktok person I can I can definitely see that yeah, for sure. Because I used to for a little bit, and I was popping for, like, a week. Just because I would, you know, look cute. Like, you know, all the, all the TikTok girls are going to fuck with it. But I, I don't really want to be considered that TikTok guy. You don't want the Sigma. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it would be dope to, like, you know, get a song popping on TikTok. But then you get the, oh, he only, he's only good because of TikTok. Yeah. But, I mean, sometimes you got to just... You know, take one for the team, you know, and I, which I mean, I would be down to like if a label were to come to me today and be like, hey, we're going to like invest all this into TikTok promotion. I'd be like, fuck it. Like, let's do it. But I mean, like doing it myself, I feel like I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Like I wouldn't want that to be my choice. You're not a big dancer? No. No? Nah? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, am I? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I can't tell if that's like a <laughs> hell no. This man dance a day in my life. I mean, I can ironically dance. Like, I'll hit a little, you know, some shit like that. But, um, but as far as, like, TikTok dances, nah, yeah. I can't. That's my sister. But, yeah, my sister's 11 and obsessed with TikTok, yeah. yeah. For, for you right now, where do you find yourself spending most of your time uh, trying to get an audience and trying to, trying to put out music? Um, I mean, we record almost every day. But other than that, it's just constant 
you know, reaching out to people, constant trying to build a relationship with people, constant looking for new connections, constant looking for what's the next step. Yeah, because now, now at the end of the day, now that I re- remember, I, re- I just remember that I actually found you through a live stream that happened mm-hmm. like a while ago. Yeah, I don't remember. It was like late at night. It was a, a random live stream. And I remember uh, just being on there um, for, what was it, John- Jonathan Hicks? A and R's from oh, Internet Money. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that's actually how I found you. And it's just crazy of just that's like, oh, what the hell? I didn't know that. Know. But yeah, yeah, damn, thank you. Like me enough to follow through. But shit, yeah, I do. Yeah. I try to get into those every single time they're like live, just because I don't know. I feel like it's worth the twenty dollars that they that they take. But yeah, it's just. I mean, we have a lot of free time, and mm-hmm. I feel like all of that should be spent. You know, trying to find something else to do to further ourselves, but I don't really know. Like, I feel like if we had a blueprint and if we had something that like we knew would be like foolproof and we would just constantly be working at it, bro. Cause we have the work ethic. We definitely do. And it's just, we don't know what to do. Gotcha. And it's just, you know, we're always trying to find that thing that everybody, like everybody just, has done something. There's something that everybody has done. And it's just like, that's what we constantly talk about. Like we'll have like late night talks and shit all the time. Like, how are we going to go about it this way? Like if we were to get, like if Taz from internet money was to hit us up, like, are we going to be able to record like 20 songs? And we know we can, Mm -hmm. but it's just like when the time comes, comes down to it, are we going to be able to knock those out? Are we going to be able to do this? How are we going to, take situations music videos and all this this way and it's just constantly in our minds and we're always thinking about it so no, that's real it's definitely better to have everything planned like a lot of times you never fucking know like a lot of times you get that you're looking for all these opportunities and the moment you get it it's just like oh fuck i'm actually not ready yeah and i feel like um one of my biggest uh traits attributes whatever would be just being able to captivate people like having like a natural attraction and I mean like be attractive not in like the cute way like oh she's so attractive I mean like literally attractive like people see you and they're attracted to you like a magnet and I feel like once I have someone listening I can you know like I said captivate them keep them in for the long run and that's just um that's I think is a really good quality to have just constantly you know if you talk to somebody you have to get them to listen because people can listen but if they're not you know listening like people can hear you but they're not listening and I think um I think I'm really good at making people listen Mm -hmm. but I also have a really big issue with overcomplicating shit just overthinking over complicating every little thing and that is a really big roadblock that I've yet to overcome. Because I'm just, I want to reach out to somebody, but I'm like, oh, he probably has thousands of people talking to him about the same thing. And so it goes in my mind, all these gears, it's like, all right, what do I say to make him, to make me be the one that he actually does respond to? And I mean, so far we're here. It hasn't really worked yet, but shit, <laughs> we're, we're working on it. I think this is a really big building block because I'm yeah. really, I'm, you know, honored to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, man, thanks for being here. And honestly, yeah, I, I admire, just from being around you, I could tell that you guys put in the work and you guys are consciously aware of what the fuck is going on. Like, you guys spend time researching and, and learning about things compared. And I think nowadays it's crazy of, like, um, your guys' generation of, I'm a bit older, I'm 24, right? And uh, you guys are all 2000 babies, right? You guys were all born. Uh, me, and you the same, <laughs> me and you the same age, bro. Well, uh, okay, okay, you, okay got you, got you. Yeah, he's okay. 25. And well, we're, we're both 18. Okay, yeah. you guys are 2000? 2002. Damn, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, yeah, but I mean, as far as age goes, I feel like I relate to him more than I would relate to mm-hmm. just an 18-year-old off the street. You seem more mature, definitely. You, you don't seem like you're, you guys are just fucking clowning around or... I don't know, you guys, you guys definitely keep your composure well. Uh, um... As much as we can, because, you know, behind closed doors, we're going to, you know, make all, make all the gay jokes. We're going to do all this different shit. But, I mean, I feel like if I were to go out to, you know, a high school, just talk to the high school seniors that are also 18, mm-hmm. I can't really relate to them gotcha. because um, I feel like we have different goals, you know, because mm-hmm. everybody wants to be the same cookie cutter person. Everybody wants to do what their parents want them to do. Everybody wants to do what is popular. And I'm so far the only person out of my town that actually, you know left and that's i i think is a flex because you know after generation 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 my whole family just stayed in that one spot yeah you're breaking the curse yeah and they wanted me to do it too and i just you know rebelled and they might hate me for that now but you know it's gonna pay off oh yeah definitely bro i i admire everything that you're doing right now what's the goal what what are you aiming for um recognition and uh 
uh, I don't know, because, you know, I don't want to be like arrogant and be like, oh, I deserve because I don't think I deserve, you know, anything. We don't we're not entitled to anything. But I think if people start listening and if people start paying attention, they're not going to be disappointed, bro, because in the future, when we actually have this pedestal to be on and we actually have the resources to do what we want to do. And I mean, me alone and him on his own, you know, we're on different paths, but we're also together. But as far as me personally, if people, you know, just, you know, let me lure you in, you know, let me, let me, let me get your attention for a little bit and you won't be disappointed. And that's really what I'm focused on right now. Just getting people's attention and having them focused. And I feel like he's capping. He is definitely capping. He deserves everything because I, both of them do actually him and him. They hold, hold. They both deserve because like for them being like 18 and they work hard. They're like some of the most like when I was 18, I wish I was doing what they were doing because likewise, likewise, yeah. It's just like they already have their heads on their shoulders at 18. I was like at 18, I was like, yeah, I want to do music, but I wasn't like as serious. If I was mm-hmm. serious about it, I mean, I probably would have like been where I wanted to be, but he like works hard. He's like he has like over 700 songs in the vault. I don't know he he didn't mention that, but he does. And that's how I know he deserves. He has one song that I constantly bug him about and tell him to drop, but he doesn't. But he like he doesn't want to drop it because I don't know why. But it's amazing. And when it comes out, I hope that you could hear it. I hope you guys could hear it too because it's amazing. They both work hard and they deserve everything in this world that's coming to them. Yeah, I didn't touch on that, but yeah, there's almost almost seven hundred songs in the vault. And I mean, as far as I don't know, thank you, love you, the homo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, um, I don't know because I think we all come from you know our own backgrounds, and I I just like to say that all odds were against me because both of my parents, I mean, not to you know expose them like I love you, mama, but like didn't really do anything Mm -hmm. and they're both you know battling mental issues they're both battling homelessness they're both um you know on their own thing and I just feel like I did the opposite of what I was supposed to do I did the opposite of um what was meant for me in a way and I feel like um it's not for no reason yeah and I think those situations are kind of tough because at the end day like our parents obviously always want us to do better but at the same time all they know is their own reality they don't know nothing else outside of that exactly. shit and I mean yeah because um every I like to say that you know I my mom is my family but when I talk about my family I'm not really talking about my mom because my mom like we talk every single day I, we my, I feel like my mom is probably my biggest fan in oh, terms yeah. of shit like that but literally everyone that's not her is just you know they never really believed until mm-hmm. now because now I'm where they think is all the capital of entertainment, you know? Yeah. They, uh, um, but like I said, it's not for no reason, and you'll see very soon. Man, well, I'm excited for everything you have going on and everything that you're, you'll do for this year, next year, and years to come, bro. Honestly, I just from talking to you right now, like I can tell your head's in the right place, bro. So I admire everything you do. And for everybody watching, where can they go follow you? Um, Instagram at scary cuts or, um, Twitter at the say less. Um, you know, I don't think you use Snapchat, but, uh, at the say less, but, um, yeah, Instagram scary cuts. That's where I'm most active. And, uh, yeah, Instagram is good night Kiko. It's just all one thing. Um, Twitter is good night Kiko. Snapchat. I'm not going to say my Snapchat <laughs> because it's, I made it back in like 2012. So I'm not going to say it, but those good night, keep going Instagram and Twitter is where I'm at. Thank you. And um, as far as the music, because I'm pretty sure anybody watching hasn't heard anything, but um, everywhere is say less S A Y L E S S. And um, yeah, just, you know, come along for the ride. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And Thank you. Yeah. The world is yours, bro. Say less. <laughs>